Hey everybody, Drew Hay coming to you live from down here in Lower Alabama. For those of you who've been following us, you know we're building a big lake down here. I'm standing on what is the end of a half mile long dam. We're going to have 140 acres of water basically behind this thing. It's going to be a trophy bass lake. For those of you that know me, you can follow us on our company page. You know from there. But here's what we're going to try to do today. We're going to try to cure some myths and legends about compaction. So what I have in front of me right here is called a nuclear gauge. I've got an outside firm that's coming in here that's actually checking us and checking each layer of soil that people clay that we put in here and and they're making sure that we're meeting the compaction that we need to have for a dam this large. So basically how this thing works is we come in, we put our layers of high, this is all high plasticity clay. It's optimal, optimal earth for doing and sealing a pond and retaining water. So we put our lifts in at six to eight inches. And then we use this nuclear gauge, this, this outside company's doing it for me. And the way this works is we take this pin and pound it into the ground. And now what I did for speed of the video is I already had a hole made here. So then what you do is you take this unit, see this rod coming out at the bottom. And then what you do is you stick it down into the hole. Then you push the buttons, it goes about its thing. And what it does is it takes and it measures the air density and the moisture level of the soil and that's how I can tell how you've got your compaction. Now the precursor to this, I had this outside company come in, we went around the area where we were going to be getting our borrow earth to build this dam and we sent it back to the lab, they dry it to their optimal, optimal just powder dust and then they start adding water to it to find out where its optimal condition is for compaction. So that's already been done. So they come out here, they know what to enter their proctor in so that they know the material that we're already working with and they're gonna measure what we're doing. But the main reason I'm making this video is different uh, forums that I moderate or, or a member of on Pond and Lake building all across the country, all right, <clears throat> I see questions and comments about types of compaction. So what I did was I have my control right here. This is all the same clay that you're gonna see out of the same area. This is my control. This has been spread with a dozer with no compaction. Then this area right here has been spread with nothing but a dozer and compacted with a dozer. This area right here was spread with a dozer then compacted with an excavator. Then this area right here was spread with a dozer and compacted with a rock truck. And then the area beside me was back there was compacted with the sheep's foot laboratory roller. Now, talking about PSI. The average human male standing on one foot is approximately 8 PSI. Now, of course, that's going to depend on how many little Debbies and Hostess cakes that somebody's ate. It's going to vary between male. Very similar with tract equipment. So whenever Mr. Holt developed the Caterpillar-type tractor back in the day, the reason was they had to spread the load and get the PSIs down because wheeled vehicles, tires or steel wheels back then, they got stuck and they, they got buried very very easily and they knew they had a problem so what they did was they developed a track tractor to be able to spread the load it's less PSI you look at your average car it only contacts a very very small portion of the road where a dozer an excavator a track tractor it spreads that over a long area on the track piece of equipment so that was the the whole thought process behind that but the thing is is just like the average male can vary on PSI so can a dozer because there's so many different types of tracks. You got standard track, wide track, long tracks, and LGP, which is low ground pressure tracks. So dozers can get down. I've seen them as light as 2.9 psi or 2.7 psi. So the, uh, the average male standing on the ground is more than some dozers are. Now an excavator, they're typically heavier, more psi per track. But then you've got a rock truck that compacted it as well. But it's very similar to your own individual cars where it's only contacting on the tire. So now we've got one, two, three, four, five different methods that we compacted here. Okay, we have our control with no compaction. So here's what we did. We went through it, we tested everything with the nuclear gauge. And here is the bottom line. I fully expected this. So the myth that you can't track and compact soil, I'm gonna tell you right now, is false. All right. Now, this is not for the novice equipment operator or novice machine or excavation company. There are tricks and there are different things that, that we know as professional pond builders and that we can do to get things to compact 
providing you don't have a roller. I'm not saying to go out and build a pond or dam and not use a sheep's foot compactor. And I'll get into that in a second. So, right here, this soil that was just placed with the dozer with no compaction at all, it came in at 78.7% compaction. That's no compaction at all. Now what we're after is whenever you take and you do a proctor, you can have a standard proctor or a modified proctor that was sent out to the lab. This is standard proctor. Like I said, they take our soil, they dried it, they went through the whole process. So no compaction, we're looking for 95% minimum. 95% is not gonna move. You can build a Walmart on it if you want to. So this right here, is no compaction at all, is 78.7% compaction. Now, the dozer. The dozer by itself is 87.6% compaction. Still doesn't meet the 95%. This was tracked over twice with the dozer. So this still fails. Now, the excavator, this, back to this, this dozer here particularly is a 25-ton wide track machine. Uh, it exerts right around 4.7 pounds per square inch. There again, half of the average male on one foot. This excavator, it's about an 85,000 pound machine. It's exerting a lot more PSI. I don't know exactly what it is, but its compaction came in at 102.3%, way exceeding our 95% that we need to have. Now the rock truck compaction down here, it came in at 99.7%. Now that rock truck was empty, it wasn't loaded. And I'll get into that in a second as well, but still that meets and exceeds the 95% that we were after. Now the sheep's foot compaction back here on the back side, it came in at the same as the excavator did. So the excavator's compacting just as much as that sheep's foot vibratory roller, and it's a big one. It's an 84 inch drum roller. It's the biggest one made. And the excavator matched that for compaction. Here's the caveat. Whenever you're taking and you're building a dam and you're trying to seal the water, and if you watch any of my previous videos, I went through that. You can use a smooth drum roller as well. And I'm not gonna get into that, but you can watch a video. But the thing is, is what's nice about the sheep's foot, if you see the smoothness of the, of the rock truck tracks behind me, and even the smoothness of this excavator track right here, what happens is even though you're meeting your compaction, water can find that seam and still leak out where the sheep's foot leaves all the individual knobs. And what we'll do is we'll come over here and we'll look at this. So you can see all these little dimples in the ground right here. The, the main reason for this is whenever you put another layer on top of this, it adheres to it. Much like every one of you out there in, in Facebook land or YouTube land, you've probably all mostly painted something at some point in your life. And what's one of the first things you do before you paint it? You sand it. You sand it so that the paint will stick to that layer. That's essentially what the sheep's foot does, is it's already sanding that for us. This is the most efficient way to compact. Because in an excavator, for those of you that are watching this, that are operators or own your own excavating company, all you're doing is beating tracks off a machine whenever, whenever it could be out digging, doing something else instead of tracking it and becoming equipment or, or uh, and using up your equipment where the sheep's foot is designated specifically to do that. It sands the layer for you and you're ready to put your next lift on right away. And it's a lot faster than taking and individually tracking it. So that's kind of the, the just of it. You know, if you use a smooth drum, you can get the same compaction with the smooth drum as well. You can do it too with a, with a standard track dozer. You can take and, and meet compaction with a standard track machine. You can even do it with a wide track, but it takes way more trips over. But there again, I'm gonna caution you. It's not for the novice operator. Don't let somebody try to talk you into, I don't need a roller. I highly recommend you have to have a roller. You should have it. Sheep's foot's the best. If you use a smooth drum, then what you need to do is you need to scarify each lift in between before you put the next layer on. Again, you're sanding it so the next layer sticks. So anyhow, everybody, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, you guys all know what to do. You put them right down there. We'll be sure to answer for them or answer them for you and uh, as soon as we possibly can. And hey, everybody, thanks for watching.